view of the Wikipedia library, uh, which I hope will be useful for your Wikimedia uh, volunteering journey. Broadly, what we are hoping to cover today is an overview of the Wikipedia library, uh, what is the problem that we have identified, and you know, what is the idea behind the Wikipedia library, how it actually works, what is the solution, um, you know, and how it has evolved over the years. I would also like to give you a, a demo of how it actually works so that we can see how to access these resources, how you can use it for citations, et cetera. And we will also speak about partnerships, which is an essential component of the Wikipedia library. The library is run on partnerships, so we will speak about that. And of course, we can have a Q&A. I can take your feedback. If you have any questions, happy to address that as well. Now, as all of us know, uh, every piece of information that's going on to Wikipedia needs you know, references and citations. It has to come from a source. Wikipedia is not a place for original research or original writing. It's actually a place where we summarize the knowledge that's already there. And uh, you, know, you can see in this article about Montevideo that to the bottom there are references. And this is a pretty small article. This is something that you would want to improve. There isn't a lot of information on these articles. And then you go on and start reading about this topic. You know, you want to read about Montevideo. You want to understand, learn more about the, the history and how you can improve this article. And you would find books and resources with many publications across the world, digital books, e-books, journals, etc. So this is a book from Cambridge University Press. It's the emergence of Montevideo as an Atlantic port. So probably this is something that you can use to improve the article about Montevideo. And as you're looking through this, you feel that this is a good book. You want to access it and read it. But you have to pay $26 just to access this book. And that's problematic. More so if you are from the global south. So you know, paying $26 for a book uh, for someone who's living in India it's, it's you know, almost impossible, right? And that is where the Wikipedia library comes in. So we have created a library which would give access to, it's actually close to 100, not 90, um, world's top subscription-only databases in, in content uh, more than 30, 33 languages. And it's free for Wikimedians. That's also something that we have to fix, not just Wikipedians, everyone who edits Wikimedia projects uh, for free. Uh, you know, you can see some of the publishers that we work with, the MIT Press, the Science Direct, uh, Sage Journals, etc. And, the, and the, we have a wide range of collections available in the library. You know, we have large international publishers of academic books and journals like the Oxford University Press, Elsevier, Brill, Wiley. These are large, you know, book and journal publishers. We also have scientific databases and aggregators who aggregate content from multiple partners from different parts of the world, like the JSTOR, EBSCO, Gale. We also have a good collection of newspapers, magazines, and archives. For example, the British newspaper archive, um, newspaperarchive.com, etc., is freely available in the Wikipedia library. We even have video databases like the Alexander Street, where they have aggregated video from multiple educational video producers. You know, so all. We have a wide variety of different uh, educational material is available uh, in the Wikipedia library. Now, though it's for Wikimedians of all backgrounds, we cannot give access to everyone. And the reason that we cannot give access to everyone is because we have partnerships with these publishers, and they are not happy giving free access to all the people, right? So we have to set certain eligibility criteria that you have to meet for you to get access to the Wikipedia library, starting with 500 edits across all Wikimedia projects. It need not be necessarily Wikipedia, but all the Wikipedia projects, Wikimedia projects, uh, you have to have at least 500 edits. Uh, you should be uh, you know, volunteering at least for six months. It's not necessarily the date of your first edit, but the date that you created your account. So from that date, you should be in the in the ecosystem for at least six months. You should have done 10 edits at least in the last 30 days, and that way we know that it's an active editor, they are still contributing, and you should not have any blocks on your username. You should be in good standing with fellow community members. And these are the uh, eligibility criteria that, that, that we have set, and 
On a monthly basis, we have about 3,000 users accessing the library today across all Wikimedians. That's the kind of uh, uh, people that we see coming and using the library. Sorry? No, no, no. No, I'm good. Thank you. Now, when you meet the eligibility criteria for the Wikipedia library, some of you may have received this notification. You will get a pop-up saying that, congratulations, now you are eligible for the Wikipedia library. You need not sign up for a new account. You need not do any of that. You can just log in with your existing Wikipedia, Wikimedia account, and it takes you directly to the, the library, and then you can start accessing all the, all the content that's inside the library. Hi. Now we can go to a demo, and I can show you how it actually works. So. This is someone else's account, so I don't want to risk logging out. But basically, when you click on the login button on the library, it will ask for your Wikimedia username and password. And as you enter it, you get uh, straight inside the library. If you are not meeting one of the eligibility, criteri eligibility criteria, you will see a pop-up which says you have not met this criteria, or you haven't made 10 edits in the last 30 days. So please come back when you have done that, so you will know whether you are eligible or not at that point. And as you enter the library, you will see you know, different uh, publishers listed here as styles, and these are all publishers that you can access. On the top, you will see three things, favorites, my collections, and available collections. Everything that you see on my collections are available to you instantly. You need not apply if you meet the basic eligibility criteria. You can directly go to their website and start accessing their content, right? Uh, for example, we can just come down here, and we were talking about the book from Cambridge University Press, so I can click here. You will see some basic information about them, and all you need to do is click on Access Collection. It's going to open a new window for you. And there, you can start searching and accessing all content, and you will not see a paywall if you are doing this, right? When you access the library through, uh, access Cambridge uh, through the Wikipedia library, you will not hit a paywall. Most often, you will also see something like this on the top, where it says access provided by Wikipedia library or Wikimedia Foundation, which means that it's supposed to work well. It's, it's, it's an integration between Wikimedia Foundation and, and the, the publisher. Yeah, please. No, no, this is only if you meet the eligibility criteria. So if you don't meet the criteria, you will not even be able to access enter the library. So once you have entered the library, we have an easy proxy configuration that will enable you to seamlessly access the content from them. So now you can just go and search for all the journals and content from Cambridge Core, which is the publishing of uh, Cambridge University Press, and, and you can access it. And every collection that you see here, you, know, you will see quite a wide variety of collections, the British Medical Journals, Annual Reviews, uh, Cambridge University Press. So you, you can see all the collections that you see here are it's seamlessly available. You need not apply again. You can just click on that button and you can start using it. On the other hand, and sometimes you will see something like this, which says temporary un unavailable, which means that there is a, a slight bit of uh, problem happening. There is an integration problem probably, or there is an outage in the access. So you can click on this. Uh, fabricator ID, and then you can see what exactly is happening, how we are tracking it, and how we are solving that problem. So if there is an access issue, you, you most likely will see a button like that, which says it's temporarily unavailable. So you can say you know, how, how soon we are fixing it. Um, on the top, going to the available collections, these are also collections available to you, but it's not instantly available. You have to apply for access, because we have only limited access for these publishers, right? Wherein on the, on the My Collections, all the publishers that you see there, it's, it's accessible for everyone who meets the basic eligibility criteria. But for this collections, we have only a limited set of accesses, so we have to distribute, for which we would like you to apply for an access and say, why would you like to access this content? For example, if we go to British Newspaper Archive, you will see that we have 300 accounts given by the uh, British Newspaper Archive out of which 221 has been distributed already. And you know it, it takes about four days on an average to take a decision when you apply. So instead of access, what we have here is an apply button.
I think I'm use yeah, it's grown. Oh, no problem. Do you want to turn that off? Uh, I, I wouldn't understand if it's in Spanish, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, when you click. F11? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So yeah, this is what you see when you click on apply. You know, you will have a couple of questions that you have to answer. Why do you want to access this resource and anything, anything else that you want to say? So if you're working on something time sensitive, you know, you want to access this content before December, you can mention that here and the library team will review that and you know, it, it helps us prioritize the, the access distribution. So that is what we, oh, okay, I have to go back because I can't press on the back button. Yeah, I can, but I can't, I can't, sorry, I click the back button. So yeah, these are like the two uh, different uh, types of collections available, instant access and multi-step access. And you can also favorite uh, if, you, if you really like one of these uh, collections and you probably would want to constantly access it, you can just click on the star button on the top and that will start appearing on your favorite. So when you enter the library next time, you will be taken to the favorites uh, tab and you can easily access the ones that you frequently want to access. So there is a favorite button. And to make it easy to, to sort of navigate through the resources, we also have certain filters available here. Starting with language, we have about 33 languages available in the library, resources in 33 languages. So if you want to filter for languages, you can just come here and probably, uh, you know, uh, select a language and filter, and that will give you the collections available in those languages. We have about five in my collections and, and one in available collections. And similarly, you can also uh, look for topics like art, business, culture, all the different topics that these publishers are covering. So these filters will let you sort of um, uh, you know, navigate easily to find the kind of topic that you want to access. And you can also look for instant access and multi-step access like we, like we said before. Also on the top, we have a search mechanism integrated onto the library. So suppose you don't know which publisher has the subject that you want to write about or, or read or research about. We have integrated uh, EBSCO discovery services onto this search. So let's say you want to search for uh, Montevideo and I click on search. This will give you results from all the publishers who are integrated on the Wikipedia library and, and the resources that are available to you from them. So here you can see different publications. It's again coming in Spanish, probably due to the uh, browser settings. But yeah, here you can just go and access collections which are already available in the library. It's a fairly extensive tool, so I'm not going into detail on how you can use it, but you can again filter, you can look for it you know, date range if you want. All these filtering is available uh, here as well. Um, I will take a pause here and ask if you have any questions about the demo part. Yeah, please. Uh, do we have any tenure for the membership? Once I get the membership, is it, uh, is it available for a, for a particular period or throughout my Wikimedia journey, can I use that? Question number two, uh, do we have any plan for using application instead of website, which can be accessed from the mobile? Do we have any future plan to bring Wikimedia library as an application? Great questions, thank you. For the first one, there is no time period that you have the access to. As long as you meet the eligibility criteria, as long as, as, long as you keep editing the uh, editing Wikimedia projects, you can continue to access. There is no time limit. However, for the ones in available collections where you have to apply for access, some of them could come with a time limit. You know, When we are distributing a coupon code or, or, or an email from the publisher, it could be, let's say, for you know three months or six months, and then after that, the access might get expired. Uh, 
Well, currently we don't have a plan to build an app. Uh, you know, if it's if it's going to be convenient and useful, this is something that we can discuss and 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 scope how we can build the Wikipedia library onto an app. Uh, you know, I understand that people, especially these days, prefer reading and researching on phones, so probably that's easier. However, this is accessible on the mobile web. You know, though we don't have an app, all these uh, interfaces available on mobile web, so you can continue to access this on your phone. But currently, we do not have, uh, if in, in the foreseeable future, we don't have a plan for a mobile app, but yeah, something, something that we could. Yeah, yeah. So some of the publishers will uh, allow you to uh, download the content as PDF, and then you can, uh, you know, do your own research. One thing to be mindful of is that when you access the content from these publishers, you are you have to agree to the terms and conditions of the publisher as well, right? For example, you cannot mass download content and distribute elsewhere, or or some publishers limit downloading the content to let's say five files a day. If you fi try to download 50 files, you may get a block. You know, you, you may not be uh, allowed to do that. So it, it would be worthwhile to be aware of the uh, publisher's guidelines on how to use their content. But most often, this is very straightforward. You know, as long as you're using it for your research and citations and Wikimedia work, I think it's fair use, and nothing will stop you from doing that. Uh, no, we can't. So this does not uh, uh, necessarily indicate that this is copyright free, or you can take the text, or the images, or any files from them and, on, you know, uh, import that onto Wikimedia. No, this is primarily for your research and to be used as citations on Wikipedia. In terms of a citation practice, I'm not sure how a PDF uh, would fit in. Uh, and you're right, you know, when, when a reader is trying to access, all these resources will still be behind a paywall. And we highly encourage you to use open access content whenever it's available. And the Wikipedia library is something that you can, uh, a place you can refer to. When you don't see quality uh, reference material, you know, in the open access domain, that's when you can come and use this. Um, and you know this is not not even indirectly an encouragement to use paywall content. It's not. Whenever you don't have good resources, that's when you have to use this. Yeah. Criteria. Yeah. Yeah. Surely we can we can go back to that. No. No problem. But before that, and anything particularly about the. Functioning of the, uh, I, I can address that shortly. Yeah. No, no, it won't be. So, so the the good citation practice would be, uh, let's say, let's go back to the example of uh, Cambridge University Press. You would see something weird about the URL on the top, right? This is not uh, ideally what a URL is supposed to look like. You would see uh, after. Cambridge-org dot. There is Wikipedia library. So, so what you have to do is you have to fix the URL before you use it for the citation, right? I mean, the paywall URL that that we saw before. That is probably the right one that you have to use. So, even if the access is expired on the Wikipedia library, as long as the uh, the publisher is keeping the content, it will continue to work. So, it's it's important that you fix the URL before you use it as a citation. Absolutely, yeah. So that's also something that we are going to cover uh, in, in the next slides. Uh, we, we definitely have plans to, we are constantly trying to expand the library, especially in languages other than English. As you see, most of the content is today is in English and mostly from uh, you know, Western Europe and North America. So that is something that we are constantly trying to diverse and we'll touch upon that shortly. Uh, that's, uh, we, we will particularly speak about the partnerships. But I hope uh, this part is clear, so we can go back to the slides. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, to the address, the question about criteria. So here we go. 
Uh, this is the criteria that you have to meet. Uh, it's on the home page as well, but you have to have at least 500 edits across all Wikimedia projects. Uh, you should be uh, a volunteer at least for six months, not necessarily the date of your first edit, but the date you created your account. 10 edits in the last 30 days, and you should not have any blocks. If you, have, if you meet this criteria, everything that's on available collections is instantly available to you. Um, great. No, we can speak about partnerships now. So, you know, you, you see that we have a wide range of publishers from different backgrounds currently, you know, in, in the Wikipedia library, but we do not pay any of them. You know, all this content that you see is being given to us for free. And that is why we have partnerships with all these publishers. Uh, and that's essential for the project, right? I mean, if we are to subscribe to this content, all the content in the Wikipedia library, it's in millions of dollars. I would say it's as close as Wikimedia Foundation's annual budget. So that is the kind of uh, monetary value of the library. And uh, we are constantly building new partnerships. We are taking suggestions from the community and constantly expanding the collections. Uh, last financial year, we brought in about 13 new collections from 10 new partners. So we, we are constantly looking at expanding. Um, now, a good question would be, why would publishers give access to us, right? What is their reason to do that? Because their business model is selling this content. So why do, have, why do they have to do that? Well, we have, we have a two-dimensional approach to speaking to these publishers. One is that we, of course, go with a value proposition. We, we tell them that as you give access to your content, this will be used for citations on Wikipedia. And that is bringing additional website traffic to your you know, website and your resources, which will, again, bring you more readers. So that is the primary uh, uh, you know, value that we try to tell to the publishers. Uh, you know, in, in today's uh, internet landscape, it's important that you diversify your website traffic. You can't be depending on Google alone. So if you have enough citations on Wikipedia, you will get a substantial amount of people coming onto your website and, and uh, accessing your content. At the same time, we also try to speak about the values of the Wikimedia movement. We tell them and we try to make them um, understand the importance of uh, supporting free knowledge, uh, you know, how we, are a, uh, how we are democratizing knowledge, how we are a community-led movement. So we tell all these values to them. And we also open doors for them to engage with our movement. Right? If there is something that the publisher wants to do with the Wikimedia movement, this can be uh, a gateway for them. And it's a lot of work to add new content to the library. On an average, it takes three to six months for us to build one new partnership. So it's really time consuming, especially because this is not a burning need for any of the publisher, right? That's something that they are probably happy to do, but they don't have a need. So we constantly have to, we have to be really persistent. We have to keep emailing them. Um, usually we have to give them an understanding of Wikimedia movement, how Wikipedia works, then the library, legal agreements, configuration. So it usually takes time. Uh, there are some partners which took more than a year to, to actually close the partnership. So it takes a bit of time for us to uh, do that. And when it's about new partnerships, we are primarily looking for organizations uh, which publish reliable content, which is considered reliable by the Wikimedia movement. And it has to be at least partially paywall. If it's an open access uh, resource, we, we don't really host it in the library because it's anyway available. So we don't, we don't do that. Um, and now, the current priorities, and I'm speaking about expanding the, the um, access, as you were uh, asking. We are trying to get more and more partners from languages other than English. Uh, we understand that this is uh, very important, uh, and, and we, we need to make sure that people from different parts of the world have enough uh, resources in the library that they can use for their own Wikimedia projects. Uh, the last three partnerships, actually, that we closed are from non-English languages. We got uh, a Dutch newspaper called The Standard on the library. Uh, we have a German publisher called Duncan Humplot on the library. So we are constantly trying to get more uh, uh, non-English uh, languages. We also have, so this is an important uh, thing that I want to talk to you about. Um, 
we have created a suggest page on the library which is for the community to come forward and say what are the resources that they would like to have that you would like to have access to that you don't currently have access the, the resources behind a paywall that you want us to go and build a partnership with right so here you can just name uh, you know add the name of the partner a description if you have and also their website url and as you scroll down you will see a lot of suggestions that are already here uh, yeah it's it's quite a big list and please don't be uh, discouraged by the long list. It does not mean that we are not working on any of them. The reason is that it takes a bit of time to actually you know, close these partnerships, convince them to join the library. And before you actually suggest a collection, it would be worthwhile to check if, you, if someone has already suggested that collection. Right? For example, let's say I want access to the Washington Post. So if I just go on filter and do this, you can see that someone has already suggested the Washington Post. It's, once a, it's a major American newspaper. This is the link. And here you can just go and upvote to say that you also would like to access. So that would help us prioritize, right? The, 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 the suggestions with the most upvotes are the ones that we prioritize and try to close as soon as we can. Also on this suggest page, you will see a button here called track progress. So when you click on that, you will actually see what exactly is happening with that partnership conversation, right? So it takes you to a fabricator board. And here you can see this is the publisher and what is happening with them, the comments, where we are with those publishers, etc. cetera. And to, 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 in order to streamline this better, we actually have a fab board to tell you how the partnerships are evolving, right? So these are the, the partners, prospects that we have, the ones that we have already contacted, which are the ones where we are having an active discussion, and you know, which, which are the ones that, are, that have agreed. And you, you can click one of these, and, and you will see the comments on what exactly is happening. So let's say we click on, and, and you will see, yeah, it's tabled for their senior management team meeting on 12th of December. So that is when we'll get to know more about them. And uh, yeah, you can, you can just use this place to track the, the, the partnerships request. And you will see some interesting names there, like the Amazon Kindle. So we are speaking to Kindle to get free access to Kindle Unlimited for Wikimedia editors. So hopefully, we'll be able to close it. Uh, but yeah, this is a place where you can see uh, the partnerships, how they are going, and which stage they are on. No, no, I think it's just a, it's not, nothing, yeah. So, yeah, we had a conversation with them. It has not really reached a, a stage where it's serious, but we spoke to them. They have some interest, so we're trying to give them more information and convince. Yeah, please. Technically, they cannot. I mean, with the yeah, so so with the with the partnership agreements that we have uh, with these publishers, uh, you know, we we essentially we are trying to ask for this access that is for uh, volunteering on Wikimedia projects, right? So technically, that's what this is for. But well, I mean, <laughs> you know, sometimes probably people would uh, use it for their own purposes. But yeah, uh, you, you, you know, it's essentially it's it's for Wikimedia work and. You can use it for your personal research. So if it falls under the category of your personal research, which essentially you will use for your Wikimedia volunteering, so then that is fair use. So I think it's, it's doable. But yeah.
that's a that's a uh, very valuable feedback so um going back to my slide um yeah so so one th couple of things that we are trying to do uh, we see that we need to publicize the wikipedia library more aggressively we need to let more people uh, know that this is available because this you know for people who use it this is really valuable people who are coming out of universities they they find it very valuable so what we are trying to do is we are trying to work more closely with affiliates and user groups so you know from from different backgrounds that you are from please feel free to send us an email to wikipedia library at wikimedia.org and that way we can discuss how we can work together so to give you some examples we work very closely with wikimedia deutschland for German language publications and coordinating the, the requests of the German wiki community. So what we do is we have a monthly catch up with them um, and they coordinate the, the requests that are coming from uh, German community. If they have any particular issues that they are facing with the library, you know, we, we address it together. They also help us uh, source partnerships uh, in, in, in their local context, uh, especially, uh, you know, the book fairs and other, uh, uh, you know, events that they can be part of. They try to advocate for the library and they, they try to build local partnerships. We are also currently uh, working in, in that manner with uh, Wikimedia UAE user group. Uh, you know, students uh, are an important component of the work that they do there. So what they do is when they have a new editor or something to attract new Wikipedians, they, they are probably exploring how they can use the Wikipedia library as a hook, wherein they say, if you reach this stage, you get free access to all this. So this is a good incentive for being a Wikimedian. And we are also, we have started speaking to Wikimedia Spain as well to see how we can build new partnerships in that region and get more people to use the library from there. So yeah, we are doing that. That's good to know. And yeah, I mean, we will be very keen to work with uh, the user groups and affiliates in the LATAM region to increase the uh, collections in the library. We have, in fact, it need not be um, traditional academic publishers. We have had some efforts to uh, see if we can get newspapers and magazines from these regions that are behind paywalls. Uh, in fact, I did reach out to a few. Um, Clarin, which is an Argentine newspaper, uh, a Spanish newspaper, we, we tried speaking to them. Uh, we haven't been able to close that partnership, but we are trying to get more and more partners from you know all parts of the world. So we'll be very happy to work with the affiliates and user groups so that you can help us and guide us with your local context and nuances involved in, in this region. So that'll be very helpful. Um, yeah, please. No, absolutely. So that that's uh, that's a discussion that we have had. Uh, you know, what 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 the, what would it mean to have open access content also inside the Wikipedia library, and then it becomes a one-stop platform for your all Wikimedia uh, research. Um, theoretically speaking, we can have limitless open access content. So hosting that in this sense may not be a, a good idea, as you said. But uh, something that we could still explore is how this could be a community-led initiative. Probably we can have a se section 
within the Wikipedia library where people could come and say that this is open access and it's freely available. And that way we need not use server space either for hosting or anything. So it's not a lot of additional technical work. At the same time, community can come together and say that these are the open access sources. Try to use this. If you don't have a good open access source, you know, go back to the library and see what is a paywall uh, source that you can use. Uh, we have a fab ticket discussing this particular uh, point about open access in the library. I can fetch it and, and, and share it with you. But yeah, that, that's a discussion ongoing, and people are contributing to that. Uh, any other questions? The criteria, yeah, yeah. We, we so, uh, <laughs> so you need to have um, 500 edits across all Wikimedia projects, not necessarily Wikipedia. You should be editing for six months, um, and that's the date of creating an account, not the first edit. Uh, so, so your account should be active for at least six months. Ten edits in the last 30 days, and that way we know it's an active Wikimedian, and you should not have any blocks. Uh, Yeah, so when you try to access the library, you will see this pop-up which says, you haven't done 10 edits in the last 30 days, so please come back when you have done that. And we believe that it's fairly easy to have these 10 edits. It, you know, it can be on Wikidata, you can add 10 entries or comments or anything of that sort. So hopefully that's, an, that's a criteria easy to meet, uh, but yeah, you have to meet it. So, so uh, on the above slide, like I said, you can either go to that URL, Wikipedia library, uh, the, the suggest uh, URL, or you can scan that code and it'll take you to that page. And there you can uh, add the paywall resource that you would like to access. And of course, before adding, like I said, you can see if someone has already added that suggestion, and then you can upvote so that, so that we can prioritize. But yeah, otherwise, this is a place that you can use. What if, what if they added on suggest? I mean, we, we, we try to do a, a sort of a, a cleanup, and, and sometimes the, the links that they post are broken, and sometimes we have um, uh, suggestions which are already open access. So we, so we try to sort of do a cleanup, and most often we, we try to identify what is the correct link, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh huh. Great. Sure. So as you see, uh, the, uh, on the first point, we are yeah we are constantly trying to get more uh, uh, languages in the library, and chances are that we already tried reaching out to uh, this one, but we haven't been able to close that partnership. We'll be constantly uh, you know, trying to do that, and if you have any references, or if you know someone working in any of these organizations, it will be really helpful if you could just put us in touch, because the first contact is the most difficult one most often. Yeah, if I go to New York Times, they have like you know, 10,000 employees, and I don't know who to talk to. So that is the difficult part. But yes, we, we, we will we'll look at the suggestions and try to you know, make all of them available. No, New York Times is not. We haven't uh, had a good conversation with them. In terms of large American newspapers, Wall, uh, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, we, we're speaking to them, but they are not fully convinced about joining the library. So I'm just pushing and being persistent. Hopefully, we'll have them soon. Um, yeah, I think we are past time. So uh, thank you for joining and listening to the session. Yeah.